This film will show the principles governing the operation of DC motors and generators. Basic to the understanding of DC motors and generators is the simple generation of an electromotive force. Devin recently released a video over on his channel Make Anything on a whole new construction toy he'd designed called Poly Panels. Now, these panels can be joined and connected in a myriad of ways to make geometric toys and fashion accessories and all sorts of amazing things. And he put it out to the community to design their own variations of Poly Panels in a My Mini Factory competition. The original video is here, linked in the video description. but. It got me thinking. You see, me and Devon are really similar in a lot of ways. People often get us confused. We both have industrial design study background. We both make our own music for our channels. We both present the similar ways. But Devon's more artistically inclined. He's much better at that sort of stuff than me. Whereas I have a background in making remote control robots. And I had a thought, what if you took this poly panels concept and used it to make remote control or otherwise robot platforms. And it reminded me of one of my really early uni projects, specifically this. I did an independent study in a new form of connector I designed for building robotics platforms way back in, I think it was 2011. Um, and I actually still have the pieces in here, Angus Deverson, independent study, final submission, 10th of the 6th, 11. And the concept was simple, a modular building platform for robots, for remote control or otherwise autonomous robot platforms that you can mix and match components and make the frame how you want it. And here it is. So this is actually laser cut. Back in 2011, 3D printing really wasn't that common beyond industrial level machines, but laser cutting, especially at university, was actually quite accessible. The acrylic's fairly cheap, and I designed instead of uh, 3D printing the whole platform, I laser cut the platform and had 3D printed connectors instead. So for example, you would take the parts as a triangle part, and you would put it in place, and then you would tap an M3 screw into the connector, and you'd get a really strong join. However, step forward to 2019, laser cutting really didn't become more accessible, but 3D printing certainly did. I learned a lot during this project. And what's really cool is that people can have similar ideas and it spurs your inspiration further. So I had long forgotten about this, but seeing Devon's poly panels, I had to try making a new version using his awesome construction system. So let me walk you through that. The poly panel robot platform has a few modified components on the base poly panels that Devon released on My Mini Factory and his website namely the motor panels and the servo panels. And that allows you to have wheels and servos. Now servos are very common in remote control applications. They are precisely controlled motors. So you can precisely control where they rotate to. They're used commonly in remote control car steering or aeroplane rudders, that sort of thing. They are not continuous, whereas the wheels are gear motors and these are continuous. And by using a combination of gear motors and servos and remote control equipment, you can use the poly panels to put together pretty much any shape platform you like for your purposes. The gear motors are really small and inexpensive. I purchased mine personally from BotBits here in Australia, but you can find them in, on other stores all around the world and eBay as well. There's a wide variety of different gear ratios, but these are the 50 to ones. And I wouldn't recommend going any faster than that because then you lose torque and these frames Although they, they're plastic, once you start adding components, they start to get kind of heavy. So I wouldn't go anything faster than 50 to one. It's already really, really fast. And these fit into the little motor mount panels, either the triangle or the square one. 
Uh, I have designed them with the ability to use two front facing mounting screws, but these are M1.6, which is very uncommon and very hard to get. So in this application, press fit and maybe a bit of hot glue is all I did to hold the motors in place and it seems to work very well for me. The servo design has two different plates. One holds the servo itself and one holds the control horn. The servos I used are TG9Es from Turnergy, which is Hobby King, the cheapest micro servo you can buy, basically. They are incredibly cheap, incredibly crappy, a lot of jitter, very low torque, but incredibly cheap. So I have a lot of them, but if you want something a bit stronger, don't forget these frames, as I said, can get quite heavy. You might want to go with a metal geared servo for a bit more money. But look, these are so accessible that if they break, who cares? You just get another one. And the control horn mounting is actually a press fit into a hole using the long two arm control horn. And you could use glue again to hold it in place, but I found it quite easy just to get a soldering iron and wipe across the, the edges. So it just melts the plastic into itself. And that is never coming off ever. Um, you shouldn't really do this with servos, by the way. <laughs> so that, that gives you a rotational mount for a turret or some sort of wheel assembly or something like that. A great starting point for something that has to rotate precisely versus the gear motors, which rotate continuously. Now your platform's not going to move very much without wheels. And yeah, you could just go buy some foamies like this, which are cheap as chips, but they're not really in the spirit of things. So I designed these 3D printed wheels instead. These are two part and have a rubber tire. And I actually discovered in my testing of this that the CraftBot 3 prints rubber and flexible materials like a boss. This is specifically a brand called Fibrology. They sent me some of their new flexible filament. And this is their Fiberflex 30D. It's really quite flexible. And as I said, it prints beautifully on the craft bot, even with retractions. So that's another plus for the craft bot. And these just slide over the wheels and give them additional traction. The wheels have a hub and the hub's designed to clamp onto the three millimeter D shaft of the gear motor. But if you don't want to do that and you want a free wheel, then you can do that too. This is designed to have a screw at the end, a M3 lock nut and I have an idler shaft mount as well. So instead of having a gear motor attached, it just holds a three millimeter screw and that allows you to attach idler wheels. So you don't need gear motors on all contact points. You can have wheels that just free spin and wheels that have motors in them. To control the motors is mm, look a little bit messy and a little bit confusing if you're new to it. I used again, BotBits ESCs. They control the brushed motors using the remote control uh, receiver. The receiver is a cheap Hobby King. Uh, what is it? TR6A. It's just a cheap six channel remote controller. I usually use for my robots. Uh, all the links to this stuff will be in the description, by the way, to help you understand it further. But understanding how to connect speed controllers to uh, the gear motors through the receiver and stuff can be a little confusing. There is guides online. I'm not going to go into it in this video, but it's very, very rewarding. And of course, now we have all this extra stuff. We have speed controllers and receivers and wires and that. We need somewhere to keep it out of the way. So I modified one final panel with these slots and these are for zip ties. I thought long and hard of making specially designed mounting blocks that had slots and things, but some of these components are quite large. Like the receiver's too large for one brick. The ESCs are a bit, bit long. So really when you're playing around with this, build the platform out of poly panels so you can snap it apart in that but just get some zip ties and zip tie stuff in place. You can zip tie it inside the frame if you like, but on the top, look, it's a, it's an experimental platform. They usually look like this. So there's no issue at all with using zip ties to hold these components in place because every build will be different. Everyone will be using different components and that's, that's the spirit of it. That's what makes it so great for quick prototyping. The, f the frame took so little time to throw together compared to building one from scratch and then getting this up and going. So how does this little guy perform? You might ask. Well, initially I had the tires on the front idler wheels and it didn't really want to turn. You see, this is called a skid steer setup where it actually turns like a tank. These wheels move forwards and these ones will move back. So clockwise, counterclockwise at the same time, it'll spin on the spot. But uh, when you have wheels at the front with no, they're not driven and they've got traction, it kind of fights itself. It's skidding around to steer and doesn't work very well. So I took the, the tread off that and made them into basically 
hard casters. So they slide and roll and now it works really, really well. The turret has just a cheap GoPro knockoff on it and you can change the direction to film things. You could put an FPV setup on this with a camera that you can actually see through goggles if you want. And I wanted to try doing like car steering as well. So I quickly took this apart and then whacked on a servo to control a little arm at the front with the two idler wheels like car steering where it would pivot sort of like a a billy cart not not proper Ackerman steering more like a billy cart steering and that actually worked pretty good too so I had control of the both independent gear motors so it could still turn like a tank but also it could drive like a car by changing the direction of those front two wheels and yeah I'm just so stoked with the work Devin's done making this available because it was so fun to modify these panels to create Basically what I'm really in love with is remote control toys and robots and just crazy stuff like this. So what's the moral of this video? Well, first I'm gonna upload all of my modified files to my mini factory. And if you want to win a 3D printer, go check out Devin's video and the competition. Basically modify his poly panels to make something awesome, upload it, and then you have a chance to win a 3D printer, which is really cool. But at the end of the day, look, we all have these amazing ideas and I think collaboratively is where we're strong. Like I came up with this thing back in 2011, this robot platform and did nothing with it because the 3D printing became easier than laser cutting. Uh, but then Devin came out with this and it reignited my interest in it. And I used Devin's platform to improve upon it with what I learned and made this. So I really enjoy doing these sort of collaboration videos and collaboration projects. And I think that we have a lot to learn with actually working together and being positive. A lot of time I see people saying like, oh, he copied me in that. No, that's not true. And it, it never was. And that's not what I'm like. So thank you so much for watching. I had a blast with this and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye.